Okay, welcome to podcast 6.3. This is uh, general chemistry, and we're going to be looking at the combined gas law and Avogadro's law. So two laws in one uh, in one quick hit today, but they're both pretty easy, and they all follow the same principles from the last one. Uh, we can see from the last podcast that the empirical gas laws are all related to one another. They're not standalone. Uh, what do we mean by related? Well, they can all be combined to uh, express as one comprehensive relationship where the combined gas laws. So let's take a look at this. We know that pressure and volume are in a ratio. We know that volume and temperature are in a ratio. And what, what came up with gay lussacs law is that pressure and temperature are also in that same ratio with volume and temperature. Uh, so we can take all three of these chunks and we can combine them into one comprehensive expression that all goes to a constant K. And this is the combined gas law, pressure times volume over T. So pressure and volume are still inversely related, but they're both directly proportional or directly related to the temperature. And we can use this to solve for different problems. So we're going to take a look at this one. This is example one in the middle of page six of your notes. So the combined gas law says that PV over T is going to be equal to K, but we can also set that equal to a second pressure, a second volume, and a second temperature. So P1, V1, T1 equals P2, V2, T2. This is uh, like a constant one, so it's not even part of the expression anymore. These are just equal to one another. So any change that occurs in any uh, particular variable can also be measured as a change in a second one. Uh, one thing with the combined law is that there's a lot of variables flying around here. So what I like to do is I like to cross multiply and get it into one multiplication expression all in the same um, numerator. So what that gives us is P1, V1, T2 is equal to P2, V2, T1. Uh, so let's take a look at this question. We have a 5 liter balloon. This is going to be V1. is in a freezer at a temperature of minus 30, so T1. And has a pressure of 800 millimeters of mercury, and this is P1. And I'll come back to the pressure in a minute. What would the new pressure be if the balloon is taken out of the freezer and placed in a warm room? So this would be T2 and expands to a new volume V2. So my pressure, my new pressure is the one that I'm going to be solving for. So we can rearrange this then to give us a new expression. And what this changes to, solving for P2, is going to be P1 V1 T2 over V2 T1. And this is the expression that we're going to use to solve this particular problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and fill in our variables. So P1 right here, 800 millimeters of mercury. That's a really big number. We can change this to atmospheres. So if we set this to 800 millimeters of mercury, remember that 800 millimeters of mercury, or one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And that gives me an atmospheric pressure of 1.05. And that just keeps my numbers a little bit smaller. Uh, so instead of multiplying by 800, I can only I multiply by 1.05. It just changes. Um, the, the, the size of the problem by a lot. So we have 1.05 atmospheres and that is multiplied by my initial volume which is right here 5 liters so 5.0 liters and then I need T2 and this is where you need to be careful temperature 2 my final temperature so 37 and temperature is always equal to Kelvin uh, so 37 plus 273 gives me a temperature of 310 and that all gets divided by my final volume. It tells me right here is 7 liters, so 7.0. And notice again, my units cancel out, so liters are going to cancel liters, and this is Kelvin. And temperature 1, my initial temperature, so 273 minus 30 gives me 243 Kelvin. And your temperatures cancel out, and the only unit left we're going to have is atmospheres. And so when we plug and chug, we get a final pressure of 0. Point, let's see, 9568. Now, it didn't say what pressure unit they wanted this in. If you don't like looking at atmospheres and you want to convert to torr, just use a conversion factor. We know that 760 torr is one atmosphere. So running this conversion factor, 0.9568 times 760, gives me a final pressure of 727 torr, or millimeters of mercury. So by changing certain variables, we can look at how a third is going to be affected because they're all related to one another. Okay, So the combined gas law is really pretty simple, and it simplifies a lot of calculations. Let's come back to Avogadro. So we looked at Avogadro when we're doing stoichiometry, and when we're calculating moles of things. So remember, one mole of anything is equal to Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, particles. Uh, and, this, and this relates back to the gases. He actually did his work in gases, and this is where he came up with this number. But what he found was that the relationship between the volume 
and the moles of, a, of any gas was a set. It was constant. And Avogadro's law says that for a gas at constant temperature and pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of a gas. So anytime we have a volume of a gas and our temperature and pressure are staying the same, our moles of a gas are going to follow a diff or direct ratio. And Avogadro's law gives us, uh, let me see, and this is mathematically V equals A N, where V equals volume, and this is in liters, A is a constant, and N in this chapter is going to equal the moles. This is the variable for moles. So V equals A N, and you can rearrange this to V over N equals A. So the volume uh, moles relationship is Avogadro's law. So we're going to come back to this in just a second. Um, he also found that at this thing called STP, that the volume of a gas was constant, the volume of any gas. So before we can go to that, though, what is STP? Well, STP stands for standard temperature, standard temp, and pressure. And this is uh, used very, very frequently with gases because it's an easy conversion if you are at STP. And what STP is, uh, standard temperature, your standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, and your standard pressure is 1 atmosphere. So anytime we are at standard temperature and pressure, and because of Avogadro's law, temperature and pressure are constant, then we can find the volume of a gas. And this is a great conversion. Uh, so Avogadro's law, again, V equals AN, and the volume of any gas at STP is exactly equal to 22.4 liters per mole. So the volume of any gas, this is not gas dependent. This is only temperature and pressure dependent. And it has to be at STP. So this is 0 degrees Celsius, and it's 1 atmosphere. So anytime you're given moles of a gas at STP, we can use this conversion, this direct conversion, to find the volume of that gas. So like I said, this is dependent on temperature and pressure, not the type of gas that's involved. So looking at example two, what volume will be occupied if six grams of solid um, ammonium chloride is allowed to decompose completely to its gases? So this solid is going all to a gas. Because we know the grams of solid, we can find the moles of gas that will be produced. Um, it's not said at STP, but I want to consider this at STP just so we can look at how the conversion factor is used. Uh, so if we take our 6 grams, and this is ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, I can convert this to moles. So we know that one mole of ammonium chloride is equal to the molar mass, and that happens to be 53.50 grams. And that gives me a value of 0 0.112 moles of gas, or moles of, of something, moles of, uh, of product. Because we're at STP, we know that one mole of gas is equal to 22.4 liters. I can set up a conversion factor. So I can put 22.4 liters over one mole. My moles cancel out, and voila, we get a liter, a volume, and we get 2.5 liters of gas. And he found this to be constant, which is great. So if you're at STP, if you can find the moles, you automatically, right off the bat, know how many uh, liters of gas you will have in that given system. So Avogadro's Law is really great because it saves us a lot of conversions. So uh, that's it for this one. Go ahead and look at your critical thinking questions. Think through some of this, process some of this. Uh, talk to me in class. Talk to peers in class. Um, and I believe you have a quiz, not after this one, but after the next podcast, yeah, after podcast four. So be thinking about this as we head into the next podcast with the ideal gas law, because all of this, the combined gas law and Avogadro's law kind of come together now into one comprehensive expression. So um, think through it, and we'll talk about it in class some more.